Hey everyone, Dr. D here, and today I'm going to explain uh, the cell cycle. All right, so the cell cycle begins with a process known as interphase. Interphase takes up about 90% of the cell's cycle time. Uh, this is essentially where the cell is growing, the cell is functioning, and the cell is preparing to divide. It starts with G1. All right, G1 is a subphase of interphase. During G1, the cell grows. The cell is just growing. It's producing proteins it needs, organelles it needs. Remember, animal cells have one pair of centrioles at this time. And if you look inside of the nucleus, there are homologous chromosomes, dad and mom chromosome one, dad and mom chromosome two, for example. There would be 46 chromosomes in a normal cell at this point. Now, usually a cell, if the cell wants to reproduce uh, or divide, the cell will proceed to S phase. Uh, but if the cell does not get that clearance to go into S phase, the cell will exit the cell cycle and actually enter what's known as G0. Just be aware of that. The cell can be uh, exit the cell cycle and go from G1 to G0. But when the cell does get the go ahead to go, go forth into S phase, It'll copy each and every chromosome. Notice that you started with 46 chromosomes total in a human cell. Well, you're going to copy each and every chromosome. So you're going to have two copies of chromosome one from the dad, two copies of chromosome one from the mom, two copies of chromosome one from, sorry, two chromosome two from the dad, two copies of chromosome two from the mom. You're going to go from 46 chromosomes to 92. You're making a copy of each and every chromosome. And just as a quick review, just re remember that homologous chromosomes are not identical, but they share the same chromosome number. So if this was chromosome seven from the dad, that would be the paternal chromosome seven. This would be the homolog, which would be the maternal chromosome seven. Paternal is inherited from the dad. Maternal is inherited from the mom. And a normal cell does has homologous chromosomes inside, okay, a normal cell. Now, only after S phase, where the DNA has been replicated, do you have what is known as sister chromatids. This would be two identical copies of the same exact chromosome. So for example, that would be chromosome seven from the mom, that would be chromosome seven from the mom. They're both exactly identical in every way and the sequence is identical. So at the end of S phase, you have sister chromatids formed, identical copies. Next, we enter G2, growth phase two. At this point, look, the centrioles, where there was one bundle of centrioles, they replicate. Now you have two bundles of centrioles and they start to drift apart. And that's about it. The DNA starts to condense into those mitotic chromosomes. Remember, DNA is loose, and then DNA starts to condense in preparation for mitosis. Okay, this would be the end of interphase. We are now moving over to mitosis, which starts with a process known as prophase. During prophase, notice that those centrioles are now drifting further and further apart towards opposite poles of the cell. And look at these little, what little green lines I drew. These little green lines represent the mitotic spindle. That's microtubules that are actually being synthesized or produced from the centrioles. Okay, at this point, you wouldn't call these centrioles anymore. It's more accurate to call them centrosomes because centrosome means centrioles plus microtubules, okay? And if you look inside of the nucleus, what do you have? You have sister chromatid pairs form. Sister chromatid pairs form and condense into those mitotic chromosomes. Mitotic chromosomes are when the chromosomes have condensed into their most tight form and they look like those X structures. Why do they look like X's? Because one sister is now connected to another sister at the narrow waist, at the narrow waist called the centromere. And the reason the two sisters are connected to one another at the centromere is because cohesin proteins are holding them together as a pair. Okay, so you have, for example, both of dad's chromosome one, both of mom's chromosome one, as a pair, both of dad's chromosome two, and both of mom's chromosome two. Now you're ready for prometaphase. 
And look, the nuclear, the nuclear envelope, the nucleus has broken down. The sister chromatids are essentially floating around the cytoplasm at this time. The nuclear envelope breaks down and microtubules attach to kinetochore. So what does that mean? Notice that the centrosome here and the centrosome here, those microtubules have really grown. And when the microtubule encounters the sister chromatids at the centromere, the, it can actually connect to the sister chromatid. Microtubules connect to the sister chromatids at the centromere, at the narrow waist. And the, the way they connect is that there are these proteins there called kinetochore, and the, uh, or kinetochore, microtubules attached to kinetochore. Kinetochore are proteins at the centromere that are docking sites for the microtubules. Microtubules attach to them, okay? So again, what's important about prometaphase, nucleus breaks down, microtubules attach to kinetochore on the sister chromatid pairs. And notice that the sister chromatid pairs start making their way to the center of the cell. By metaphase, they have made their way to the center of the cell. It's called the, this imaginary metaphase plate, right? Sister chromatids line up at center of cell. Okay, sister chromatids line up at the center of the cell. And all of the sister chromatids are attached at their kinetochores to microtubules from opposite poles of the cell, opposite centrosomes. Now, do you remember the cohesin proteins holding the sisters together? The cohesin proteins holding the sisters together? Well, those break apart, those let go. And look at this. This sister chromatid separates from that sister chromatid. So anaphase, sister chromatids separate from one another when those cohesin proteins that held the sisters together release. One sister chromatid heads to the left and one sister chromatid heads to the right. So why is that important? Remember, these sisters are exact same information, right? So. What that means is the same information is going to this cell as is going to this cell. If this is dad's chromosome one going to this cell, this is another exact copy of dad's chromosome one going to that cell. And there's mom's chromosome one heading to this cell, mom's chromosome one heading to that cell. So whatever information is heading to the left, that same exact information is heading to the right because it's sister chromatid is heading to the right and that is an exact copy. And just to be clear, the reason these are traveling apart, the reason they are moving, is not because the centrosome is, is pulling the, the sisters. The sisters themselves make their way to the opposite poles of the cell. You know why? Do you remember those little kinetochore proteins attached to the centromere? Those little kinetochore proteins have little motor molecules inside that walk. So these. They're, they're walking, okay? The, there's kinetochore pro, those kinetochore proteins have little motors inside that walk. So the sister chromatids are actually walking themselves to the opposite poles of the cell. It's a pretty interesting fact. So what happens in the next step, telophase? This is the final phase, subphase of mitosis. Now you have two cells with 46 chromosomes each, and whatever DNA is in this new nucleus is found in this new nucleus, okay? Uh, no, notice that the new nuclear envelope starts to form. So a daughter nucleus forms here and a daughter nucleus forms here. Okay, daughter nuclei form. And usually cytokinesis can start at telophase, but what you should realize is cytokinesis is not part of telophase. Cytokinesis is not part of mitosis but it is concurrent with mitosis. So it can happen at the roughly the same time. There's some overlap there, but mitosis plus cytokinesis is actually called M phase or mitotic phase. Just be clear on that. All right, so what is the product of mitosis? Mitosis results in two genetically identical cells. All right, mitosis results in two genetically identical cells and those are somatic cells two genetically identical somatical cells so this cell and this cell are identical to one another and they are identical to the original cell that made them way back okay i hope this helps uh, please let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and uh, thank you for watching